Oh, and I should have full screen this. Okay. All right, folks, let's roll. Welcome to today's Lunch Hour Legal Marketing Webinar. I'm Heidi Alexander. No, <laughs> just kidding. I'm Jared Correa. Heidi's out sick today. I'm another law practice management consultant at Mass Law Map, where we provide law practice management consulting to Massachusetts attorneys, law students, judges, and legal personages generally. Um, now, either you've tuned in live or you're listening to the recorded version of this program as a podcast uh, through the Lunch Hour Legal Marketing uh, podcast at Legal Talk Network. Regardless of who you are, or where you are, or how you're listening, we're happy you came in here uh, for today's show. Today, we're going to hear about social media marketing, automation, and email marketing from Chelsea Lambert of Smokeball. Now, Chelsea used to be a, a practice management consultant like I was, um, but she discarded us like a piece of gum on the street, used and chewed up, and now she is working for a vendor. <laughs> And it's a good vendor. Um, I will tell you uh, to take a quick look at Smokeball. You can uh, acquire a demo if you want. And uh, they also have a new feature called Activity Intelligence AI, which is a new way uh, to uh, show a graphical representation of your work on a case. And Chelsea can tell you a little bit more about that. As always, folks will be muted during the podcast, uh, during, the, uh, during the webinar. And then after the fact, you can, we'll read questions from the chat. So if you have questions, submit them to the chat, and Chelsea will have the opportunity or to elect to take those if she wants to. So it's just the ground rules, and I'm going to turn it over to Chelsea Lambert from Smokeball, and thanks again for doing this for us. We really appreciate it. No problem. And thank you so much for the warm welcome, guys. Um, there we go. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. There we go. All set. Okay. Um, so without further ado, um, we're going to jump into today's session, and I'm going to be jumping back and forth between um, two different PowerPoints today because what we're going to talk about um, are the three tools that I feel make the most impact in small firms um, from a marketing perspective. And to give you a little bit of background about myself, I've spent um, the last 10 years in various capacities working with small firms across the country, um, making, helping them make decisions about the technology that they should use in their practice or the uh, marketing that's going to work for their particular practice area. So what you're going to see today is a presentation um, that blends all of the tools that have worked well inside of small firms. And when I say small, we're talking about one to um, 15 attorneys or one to 20 total staff members. So to kick things off, we're going to talk about social media first because we're going to try and demystify a lot of what people um, might have currently thought about social media or maybe what they've tried and hasn't worked for them and the reason why it didn't work. But overall, I want you to think of, and this is a March Madness um, themed presentation today, because social media pages or social media in general is kind of like a team, a marketing team that works to promote your firm. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, YouTube, um, they all have a different style, much like if you're thinking about basketball, a point guard has different responsibilities than a center or a forward. So each of them has um, a unique style. So depending upon your practice area, um, one network might work better for you than another. And that's okay. We just focus our time in that area. Um, but also, I want you to think of each of those tools as a free mini website. So the first component of these three tools that you need to make your marketing work or help your firm thrive are social media pages or presence on social media. The second is going to be automation. Um, so automating those um, profiles, those pages, so that you don't have to spend half of a working day making sure everything is up to date. And then the third, where you really capture the value of that social media marketing, which is an inexpensive way to promote your brand, promote your law firm, and promote your services, but how do you capture clients out of that? So building the pages is step one. The middle piece is automating them so they're consistent and they can keep growing your following. And then the third um, is to take those people that you meet online and actually bring them into um, an email marketing campaign where you can continue to talk to them and get access to them in their inbox. So 
Outreach, don't broadcast. And in general, this should be a marketing rule um, that you follow no matter what marketing you're doing. People are much more inclined to make a connection with you if they feel like you, they have something in common, if they don't feel like they're being shouted at. I have had firms come to me and say, I don't understand why my marketing is not working. And the answer is, well, I look at your page and everything is, we have free consultations. We're open between nine and five, Monday through Friday. Free consultation, here are hours. Free consultation, did you know we do estate planning? And there's not really a ton of value there. So you lose that connection with, with the new visitor pretty, um, pretty quickly. So broadcasting updates and offers um, is going to send your page to the bench and probably not want people, um, encourage people to stop following you or just kind of tune you out because it's the same thing over and over again. You can tap into hometown issues. You can focus on an employee's anniversary or the great work that they do within your firm. Um, sharing the office dog. We have uh, a column in our Smokeball newsletter called um, Smokeball Furry Friends or our attorneys at PAW or our PAW Legals and just bringing some type of human quality. Um, maybe you coach a, uh, an extracurricular um, or, or little league team um, on the weekends that you can share some of those stories and how the firm gives back to the community in that way or volunteer activities. So blend some human qualities into the mix of of what you're talking about, what your outreach is, um, so that people don't tune you out and they start to feel like you're someone that they could be talking to at a barbecue or across the fence. So you need to tell a story. And really this um, is the foundation of what you're going to be using the marketing tools for. So what is that commonality? Let's use estate planning as an example. Um, I have kids, you have kids, we have kids. Let's plan for our kids. Are these are the things that I think about when my child is about to go away and study abroad for a year or go on a um, field trip where they're going to be staying in a different place? Do you have a power of attorney? How are you planning for them when they are going away for, for college? What are your um, plans for aging parents? And you can kind of share in those stories or paint a picture of what a common situation might be that you're familiar with. Telling a little bit about yourself. Are you a um, mother or father of a couple kids? Do you also run half marathons or marathons? Are you a super overachiever or do you really love Netflix, um, a Netflix marathon on the weekend? Um, throwing in common traits that could be the same between you and your readers is a way for them to engage with you, to make you, them feel more comfortable um, with advice that they might receive from you in a newsletter or on your website. And then what are you passionate about? Helping parents protect children from legal issues in their absence. We're going to use estate planning as an example throughout um, today's course. However, this can be applied to um, bankruptcy or uh, collections or consumer protection, people who have just gone through an injury or an accident, talking about ways that they could stay positive during um, a challenging time in their life. Just ways that you can make them feel more comfortable in their situation and that you know what they're going through and that you could be a potential advocate or aid to them during this time in their life. As we all know that um, when you're talking to an attorney, it may or may not be um, something positive that's going on. It could be buying your first house, but it could also be going through a divorce. So you just want to make them feel as comfortable as you can um, and not necessarily pushing services on them right after you meet. So who do you help? And how are you involved in your local community? So these are just a few ways that you can build a story around your firm and showcase why you really um, get excited to go into the office every day and what motivates you to practice the area of law that you're in. And so fans and followers. So essentially, this is a never-ending draft of talented people who are willing to talk to others about your firm. So in the, the sports team that we have for this presentation, think about this as your cheerleaders, as your audience. Um, and I'm going to give you some examples of social media pages that do this really, really well. And keep in mind that someone who follows your page might not be an immediate client or candidate for your services, but someone who could have a friend, a mother, brother, sister, cousin um, that could be in need of those services one day. And so you want to put yourself in a position where you're continually growing your following, constantly putting valuable information out there, 
And then one day when those people are ready, they will share, they will forward, they will um, bring your information to, to another person for review. And so this is actually um, a good way to think about what types of content you can provide online. And this, I'll have to give credit, um, comes from a presentation that Mark Britton, the founder of Avo, um, one of the largest, if not the largest consumer legal um, site online said, he said, what is your cheeseburger? And as consumers, we've been trained to think that you get something um, possibly for free or for a dollar, and then you, there's other packages that come afterwards. So if you think about what is your cheeseburger, what would you, do you want fries and a Coke with that? And so if you're giving them something as simple as we'll use estate planning, um, your guide to simple estate planning for um, a new family. So brand new parents, just had a child, what are the five things that we need to know about estate planning or maybe the two or three documents that we need to have in place in the event that something were to happen to us just to protect and start our new family off on the right foot. And this might be something as simple as a downloadable guide on your website. Um, it could be uh, five things or three things to think about um, before moving forward with an adoption or um, your guide to a particular practice area in your local jurisdiction that's specific to nuances um, that you might not, that people might not know. Uncontested divorce in the state of North Carolina is very different than uncontested divorce in the state of Illinois. So calling out what those precautions um, could be if you are looking to do a simple divorce is going to help people identify with the services that you provide and also establish you as an expert um, in that area of law. So that what you'll be able to do is when they come to your website, you will be able to say, here's a blog post, here's a downloadable guide, get to know me, get to know the type of services that I provide, and then when they read it, they will, it will become clear that they might want to speak to a counselor or an advisor um, to get more information. And at that point in time, now what's happened is they've given you their email address so that they can read this particular guide or they can read um, these three things that they should know before considering an adoption or as a new parent, the five things that I should have in place to make sure my family is, is prepared and planned in the event of an emergency or something that might happen. Um, and now I can keep talking to them afterwards. So they've given you their email address, you've given them this valuable piece of information, and now I can include them on my monthly newsletter. I could send them an offer for maybe a discount on an estate planning package um, or a simple you know, flat fee for a power of attorney at a bare minimum um, if they download something related to planning for kids who are going away to college. Um, so by giving them something for free, they're also giving you permission um, to keep that conversation going. And I think that that's the most important thing to realize about um, marketing yourself online, marketing yourself on social media, is that there is a little bit of a give and take there. And in order for someone to give you permission to contact them, you have to provide something of value. You cannot just come um, with discount signs and um, flyers and special prices and expect to have a reaction. Um, they can see that in all kinds of places. Um, they're coming to you because they're looking for something of substance and of value. And if you give that to them, um, then that conversation will live a lot longer. So I'd like to bring up one of the best examples of what is your cheeseburger I have ever seen. Um, and to this day, I um, consider Rachel to be a great example in this space of an attorney who chose to market their business unlike a traditional law firm and was wildly successful in doing so. So Rachel started off as a virtual practice um, way back, I want to say 2007 or 2008, and don't quote me on that because it's her, her law firm, but um, she created a package called the Small Business Bodyguard. And up until this time, I had never seen um, an attorney do any type of discount or sale around um, Black Friday or Cyber Monday. And what you're looking at is Rachel has a business where she uh, started out supporting Gen X and Gen Y online entrepreneurs. 
So today you'll see life coaches and nutritionists and everybody under the sun that um, photographers and maybe people that make wedding videos and everybody's out there doing business, but they don't always have proper contracts in place. Maybe they downloaded something off of legal zoom and just kind of messed with it to fit their business. But most likely they don't have a proper legal kit nor as a small business owner, do they know what they're supposed to have? So Rachel provides um, services. If you want to file an LLC, you need a monthly um, retainer for ongoing legal support services for a growing business. She provides all of those full service representation um, services. However, as her cheeseburger, she has small business bodyguard. Now, what's unique to her is that she doesn't even, there are guides and things that she gives away for free, but this book, this small business bodyguard book or kit is actually something that she charges for. And you'll notice at the bottom of this screen, there are two different um, links. One to her full service representation law office and the other to small business bodyguard, which is you, where you can purchase this kit. And I do believe she set them up as two separate entities for um, ethical and liability purposes as well. And what you'll notice is that there's a cheeky way of promoting this information. So she's calling out to her audience, this is the legal bodyguard for your business. Cover your basics, cover your assets, and cover your behind. So Small Business Bodyguard is a basically a legal 101 or a entrepreneur's guide to making sure that you don't mess things up when you get started, which um, I was an entrepreneur before I came to, to Smokeball, so there's a lot of stuff that you have no idea that you're even doing wrong, and until someone sits down and really walks you through everything that you're supposed to have and the potential legal cost of it, um, it can be kind of overwhelming. So. Rachel launched this um, small business bodyguard kit and she was charging somewhere around I believe $400 um, for this kit and on Cyber Monday, it was Black Friday actually, um, I was in a cab heading to work and the driver asked me, do lawyers ever run Black Friday sales? And I started laughing, I was like, no, there's no way you would see that, there's no such thing as half off divorce. Um, and went about my day. And sure enough, I get an email on Monday morning, which was Cyber Monday, and it was Rachel Rogers offering a discount on Small Business Bodyguard. And usually when I'm talking about it in a live audience, I'll survey everyone and say, do we have any idea you know, how many she sold between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m.? And she, in just that eight hour day with no marketing um, spent, dollars spent or paid you know, promotional advertising, just an email to her list with a Cyber Monday discount saying X percentage off of the price of this kit, um, sold over 600 copies in that day. So not only did she get the initial revenue from the actual kit being sold, but then a percentage of those clients were upsold into full service representation. Because what happens is you get something like this, you read it, and you completely realize that you are way out of your league, you are in over your head, and you are not a lawyer. So, of course, you're going to call that same lawyer back that provided you with this insightful information and say, hey, I need your help. I don't really understand what applies to me in this particular situation. Is there something beyond these templates that maybe we could do together? Um, and the law office is waiting right there to help you. So this is also a great way to keep in touch with people who buy the kit because then you can check in on them two months, three months, four months later. You could even create a community um, on Facebook or a LinkedIn page where you have regular check-ins. You could bundle check-in calls with something like this. So here, I'm gonna give you a kit um, with all the proper disclaimers and liability protection in place for the law firm um, with disclaimers that say, this is not specific to your situation. These are basic templates that can be used for X, Y, Z. Beyond that, you should consult with an attorney and so forth. Um, all of the, the disclaimers and T's and C's, um, Jared and his team can absolutely guide you on that. Um, but the actual meat of it is something that it can be helpful to your ideal target market. So the basics of a prenup, 
for people who are about to get married. Um, the things to know about divorce before making that final decision. These are free guides that you can provide online on your website with um, limited amounts that we, with proper disclaimers that can then open the door to furthering that conversation. And that's really the goal um, with something like this. So asking yourself, um, what is your cheeseburger? Um, and thinking about that. So as you promote your business on social media and you provide content or downloadable guides like the one that you just saw, you can also showcase your personality. You can use images to connect with your ideal client. So it might be if you do family law or divorce, it might be motivational quotes about moving forward with your life and starting fresh and building the life that you want for your children. Um, establishing that commonality, including video whenever you can. Please don't shamelessly self-promote. And then jumping into our next section, you can automate. So we're gonna go through some automation tools that make social media marketing a lot easier um, for your practice so that it's not a full-time job. So when we lay all of this out and we look at the overall content strategy, what we're doing at the top with things like Small Business Bodyguard or a blog post or a YouTube video is we are creating digital assets. And digital assets um, are things that you can use over and over again. And I think so many attorneys get turned off by um, blogging because you go through this heartache of pouring yourself into a post and it takes you two days to write it and then you put it out there and you get like 10 likes and two shares and then it fades away. And then you don't really see it. And that, that's not necessarily how it has to be, is you're gonna get that flash in the pan, um, excitement and sharing right when it first comes out, but reuse that content. Use that blog post in an email newsletter, linking back to your website. Um, paraphrase it and put it into a video that then links to your website and offers an extended um, conversation with you if they've watched the video and completed a form on your site. Um, bundle them together and create an ebook, which is what you saw with Small Business Bodyguard. That was the culmination of years of articles and forms and templates that Rachel had most likely been creating for a lot of her clients. And then she does a new edition every year and revises it. Um, I think every year, every couple of years, she revises it. And then what you're doing is you're creating these assets on your site. So your site is getting more and more valuable. There's more and more um, expertise that is coming through just the, the website property alone. And then you have the ability to share those um, on social media, in email marketing, making YouTube videos. And so the next piece, after you have started using social media and these tools to draw people into your site and to connect with you, is to engage your audience. Um, so people that are constantly sharing your materials, that um, are out there promoting your services, clients that have sent you um, referrals, connect with them, pay attention to your advocates, thank them, um, and then give them additional opportunities um, to connect you with, with others that might need your help. And that is the call to action. So every single email that you send, your social media page um, or these free guides on your site should be attached to some type of call to action. Whether that is, I'd like to download this ebook, okay, no problem, I'm gonna need your email address for that. And that's a completely normal exchange um, you, because what will happen is, is once they've downloaded that guide or filled out a form to do a free consultation, you are immediately reaching out and calling them or maybe if they've downloaded a guide, you're sending them an open house or a, a local seminar you'll be speaking at um, or something along those lines where you can meet them in per person um, and continue to further that connection or give them another opportunity to learn. Maybe you're doing a webinar about home buyership um, and what a closing is really like for, the, for anyone who hasn't gone through one before. So simple things um, and just remember that Coming from, um, you know, just my, my age group, I am literally the legal hotline for every single one of my friends. At this point, I should get my JD just for referral purposes alone because every time, it doesn't matter if they're buying a house or um, got a traffic ticket or 
or need a prenup, I am the first one that they call and ask because they have no idea what it would take to find a lawyer, get in touch with a lawyer. Um, maybe they've Googled, but they haven't necessarily made a connection. And so there is still a stigma and still a, um, a wall that exists between consumers and attorneys because we're just afraid. We have no idea what you're going to charge or no idea where to even start. So by, by providing these guides, you're breaking down those barriers. And you're also going to break down those barriers that it would take if they know someone who's going to buy a house or is getting ready to get married or is... Um, about to have kids and looking for a state or has aging parents and needs estate planning help or guidance. So you're breaking down those barriers and you become a more referable attorney um, than some of the others that they might just see searching through Google. So this is what I like to call the full court press, um, which is social media automation. And so what this is, is using Hootsuite as a tool in between um, and if you have not set up your uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Google Plus business pages, um, you're, you can feel free to email me afterwards, and I have how-to guides that I can send you on how to do that. But basically what you're looking at is Hootsuite. There's a couple of other tools that I'll show you too. It lives as a layer in between the website or the blog. So you create something one time on your website or blog, and then you can add an address um, a link, a message into Hootsuite, and it will push it out through all three of those channels at the same time. So you publish once, and it automates everywhere. And that is really the key, because like we mentioned earlier, how you write a blog post, you can schedule it to go out again 30 days later, and then again 90 days later, because your audience today is not always gonna be the same as your audience tomorrow. And the first time around, somebody might have missed that article um, or just had a million things going on that day and wasn't online. So don't ever be afraid to reshare your content. You'll find that actually the reshares 60, 90 days later are just as powerful um, as they were on day one, if not more so, because your audience is larger. Um, and an automation tool gives you the ability to do that. Now, I will say a couple of, um, usually when I'm doing a session live, most people will ask, well, doesn't automation take away from the authenticity of social media? And automation does not take away from the, autom from the authenticity of social media if you are actively engaged in paying attention to comments and shares and essentially you're moderating your page. So the content is coming in, everything is flowing, you're consistent, people can see that the page is moving along, um, but what's happening is, is that then you're jumping in with comments and thank yous and follow up as needed. So you're taking the actual, um, the minutia, the, the work, you know, pulling weeds in the garden, so to speak, um, and you're having that automated so that you can concentrate on cultivating your audience and cultivating your message. So Facebook company pages, we're going to run through this pretty quickly. Um, anybody who questions whether or not they should be on Facebook can take a look at these numbers um, just to give you an average, the average amount of time a Facebook user spends on Facebook in a given day is 3.5 hours. So um, it's a little staggering. Granted, that's crossing like the teenager group with like your, you know, 85 year old grandma. Um, and where do we meet in between? But it is every day, every time you think you're standing in a line or looking for a way to kill time or riding the bus or the train to work, um, people are paid, are are filing um, and moving through those pages. So just a couple high level stats there. Um, creating a page is really really easy. Um, you pick a category, you answer some information about your page, and then you can start posting and sharing um, with friends. And this is just a simple wizard. It walks you through step by step, um, and it makes it really, really easy. You can even import entire contact lists. And if anybody would like um, one of these guides, this is cut directly from uh, a how-to guide that I can send to you um, after today's session. Now I wanna show you some examples of some of the most successful social media pages out there. Um, this is Jacob, who hands down is the most successful um, social media advertising attorney I have ever seen. 
He just, he knows his message. He knows his audience. He's in California. He does immigration law. Every time I screenshot his page, like this one, um, was done when he had 98,000 um, followers. Today, I believe he's up in the 130s, 120s or 130s. Um, and I encourage you to go check out his page to follow him. Um, the things that I love about Jacob's page and the way that he uses it is if you look at the image behind Jacob, um, you can see that I, it's very possible that his clients could be any one of those people. Any one of the, the people on the screen could be a potential immigration client. Uh, it's very clear what they do. And then you'll also notice the post below is not something about law, is not something about the free consultation hours or where to find them. I can get all of that info from the about section. It is a motivational quote about just thinking positively and thinking about what can go right in your life. Because we are trying to gain citizenship or get a visa so you can come and work a new job here in America. Um, needing his help and making you feel comfortable in that situation is gonna be um, that key piece that makes you jump from just looking at something online to actually picking up the phone and calling him. So you'll also notice um, reviews down in the bottom right-hand corner. He has a tremendous amount of Facebook reviews, really happy clients, just overall um, a really, really high rating on there. So I encourage you to check out his page um, and take some cues from his style. Also, one more thing to, to point out, um, that action shot of the actual attorney in the profile picture. So you have two main images with any of your social media pages. The primary cover image behind, which should be either your logo, a depiction of who you work with, something that states your practice area, and then your profile image should be, um, if you're especially a, a solo or a, or a team, um, an action shot of that person, because you'll notice next to the posts, that's what they see, that's what they will see in the feed. So the next one um, is Upright Law, so helping America get back on its feet, very clear um, understanding of what they do. Also on the right-hand side, they do um, special things like winning a scholarship to law school. They'll also um, do other um, promotions with careers and things that they have um, available. They'll showcase stories of um, people who have maybe struggled with student loan debt that um, are now under the, the bankruptcy law able to work out um, a hardship situation. So just making people feel comfortable, letting them know what uh, their mission is right from the time that they reach the page, and then a logo that you would not necessarily see um, a law firm with. It's a, a person kind of standing upright above the law. Um, and so just kind of thinking outside the box about design with this one. The next two, um, so Paige Law on the left and Patricia Finn on the right. Patricia loves Batman, we know that. And Patricia's done really well. It's interesting to see um, hers, just so just over 6,000 followers there. And she really kind of pours her heart out in her posts. So she is um, a warrior, a mom, an attorney out for justice. So um, solo attorney who's going to fight for your rights also shares some of her personal beliefs establishing commonality um, and then also does a little bit of work um, politically in her local community too that you can see with her um, video on election. So Page Law on the left hand side, 17,000 followers, divorce and family law. I love the group photo in the Cumber image because you would be working with any one of these lovely ladies. Also, you'll notice um, the call out to the um, Cardinals organization in their first post there. So showcasing some of that local um, support for teams or um, a particular athlete. That's something that will resonate with that audience and also kind of get them out of the, the mindset of I'm on, you know, Facebook browsing and find and come across a law firm that has um, more human qualities there as well. So LinkedIn, we'll talk about LinkedIn a little bit. Um, LinkedIn is 
more suited for business related areas of law. So consumer areas of law or highest concentration is almost always going to be on Facebook. I will note that for consumer areas of law, I do know a few attorneys that are uh, experimenting with Instagram and Pinterest. You're just still not going to see that engagement the same way that you will um, with Facebook. It's just a numbers game and the number of users and also um, being more text and video driven as opposed to pictures. LinkedIn company pages are tied to your personal profile, so you're going to need to make sure that your personal profile is up to date to set one of those up. And then you can do individual pages for each practice area. So that's a big difference between LinkedIn um, and Facebook. You can actually create um, showcase pages. So if you have a general practice um, or you specialize in business law, but you specialize in certain areas of business law like uh, startup, merger and acquisition, um, you can have showcase pages, uh, IP patent trademark, you can have showcase pages that highlight those unique niche practice areas. Um, employee and associate profiles are nice because they connect everyone um, to that same LinkedIn page so they can see if they're connected to anyone else in your practice. Um, so LinkedIn is typically as firms grow, um, either they do a very niche type of business law or corporate law or, um, or a larger or growing firm, you will see more um, engagement on LinkedIn. You can also repost or originate blogs here, um, which can be then used in LinkedIn groups. So if you are looking to get more familiar with LinkedIn, um, I would seek out uh, a couple of LinkedIn courses or I can point you in the right direction um, with some videos that will help you kind of understand how groups work and um, blogging on LinkedIn as a platform. I would only recommend this if you have a very uh, niche area of law that's usually business um, or corporate law related um, where you'll see some traction there. And then you'll just go to some quick navigational things here. So you'll go to interests and then just below create a company page. Um, and then to grow your LinkedIn audience, Again, the most important thing here is consistency, and then you can post some of your own articles or website content into groups that are specific to your practice area or your ideal client. You can also um, promote events and then match up your email contacts to, to expand your network there. And just some examples of um, LinkedIn, so LinkedIn being the um, basic layout is all gonna look the same. So here we have a picture of the firm, and then you've got updates below. And then here you can see estate planning, now this one is home, and then you'll notice on the right-hand side next to home, um, right here, products and services, where you can do those practice area pages. So Google Plus Business Pages, this is basically a Google listing um, the best way to find out where you set one up is literally just type into Google, Google Plus Business Pages, and it will bring up um, a verified listing that you say is yours or not. And what this does is it just basically allows you to claim your official address. And the important thing is, is that um, with Google Business Pages, this is the simplest one to set up. Um, the reason being is that you're basically just verifying your address, hours of operation, um, and phone number so that when someone searches for you on their smartphone, they will actually find you and you'll come up in those instantaneous search results. And the reason, um, part of the reason that Google has really owned this is because it does feed into Google search results. Facebook, um, while it is wonderful and there are billions of people there, um, does not feed the same results about your business into Google when someone searches, and Google's the default browser. So make sure that you go grab that and set it up. Um, you can spend some time here. I would um, recommend that you find your home in either Facebook or LinkedIn and concentrate your efforts there. You'll pick a category, and then you'll confirm your information to build your page, so pretty straightforward. Um, you can add photo and description to the back. And then just to kind of give you um, some examples, this is the posting and sharing option. So pretty straightforward here as well. I would not recommend investing a ton of time into that page. Set it up, make sure that your address is um, accurate because this is what is going to appear. So when once your page is done, it depends on how much work you've 
put into it, but it will look something like this. And then you can see, here's my website, here's my contact info, this is what's gonna come up when people search um, for your information or for a local attorney um, in those Google search results. And just a couple more examples of what the layout can look like. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have more um, corporate um, and business uh, images on the left using pictures of the city. And then on the right, um, for the injury attorneys, um, the staff at a volunteer event, uh, and then some other information just about you know, who they are and who they work with and things that they do in the community um, to showcase their page. So next up is tools to make social media easier and then capture the value. So we're spending a ton of time promoting our brand, building our presence, how do we avoid letting it take over our entire day? So um, if you have a pen, jot these down or save this information for later, these are gonna save you a ton of time. Probably one of the most frustrating portions of marketing or social media images is Canva uh, or is the actual picture piece. So Canva is this amazing tool, it is free. You go, just go to canva.com, you can sign up with Facebook or your Google account um, and it gives you these really pretty templates. So you wanna create motivational quotes and drop your logo in the bottom of it, no problem. Um, if you wanna buy images, they are a dollar. It's, they have a ton of text um, layouts and formats. You can just click in here and start typing and then download whenever you're ready to use them. Um, so I encourage you to use this as you build pages or create material um, for social media. It saves you a ton of time. Clout. So we have two choices for automation, clout or Hootsuite. And this is what both of them look like. Two very, very different flavors. It's totally up to you which one you want to use. They do almost identical things. Here's the difference. Clout, on the left-hand side in the top corner, you'll notice that I have a score here. Um, so this score is 50. The highest I think I've ever got to was like up into the mid-60s. And it changes on almost a weekly basis depending upon how active you are. And what this does is if you're just looking for like simple metrics, what am I doing? Is it working? This is going to be your tool. Okay, if you're only connecting like maybe one or two profiles, I would recommend that you use Cloud. What it does is on the left hand side, you'll notice you have three options explore, find me content to share, schedule, schedule this content to be shared, and measure is it working or not? And so you can go through, you can find it, will go out and look at your pages and it will say, oh, hey, you seem to be looking for um, an audience that is interested in, if you were to go to my profile, it would be um, legal technology. So they're always going to suggest a ton of legal related content for me. And then it'll have these little um, icons underneath like trending, popular, celebrity news. And so what you can do is you can choose to share this from here. And then it will measure that um, and it'll say what networks do you want it to share on share it on my LinkedIn page, share it on Facebook, and then it's gonna measure that um, over the course of time. And you can go in and see which topics are resonating with your audience and what is not, which might give you the idea for an ebook or something else to download later. Hootsuite is a little bit more technical, but it allows you um, to manage all of your feeds in one place. So you'll notice that these three columns, I have a column for Twitter, I have a column for Facebook, I have a column for LinkedIn. Up at the top, I have this option to compose a message. And by doing so, you can fill each of these columns with um, the posts that you want to have go out. I can have a completely different voice on Twitter than I do on Facebook, and I can have other different things go out on LinkedIn. And what you do is you just stack this queue with all the information that you want. It can go months in advance. This is where if you write a blog post, you can come into Hootsuite, you can have it go out today, and then I can have it go out again 30 days from now, and again 90 days from now. So this makes it easier to schedule things out in the future. If you're going on vacation, you know that there's always gonna be consistent um, material heading out the door. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll monitor and, um, and mediate those comments as they come through. So the idea is to automate what you would be doing manually, and then you can pay attention to answering questions um, and what's most important. Now before we jump into q and I'm gonna bring up 
one last um, couple slides. So the goal of this is to get people to your website so that then you can create an email campaign or use email marketing to talk to them. So let's say that you got everybody into an email campaign and that would be by downloading, let's say, a free help guide or um, downloading that what is your, your cheeseburger or purchasing a legal kit or downloading a free form that you have. Maybe it's like a healthcare surrogate form or a simple power of attorney template or something along those lines. And I just want to make sure everybody can see this one. Here we go. Everybody should be able to see that now. Um, so this is the example of how an email campaign works. So we get their email address by having them download a guide. And the very first email should be, thank you so much for downloading this. It's great to meet you. We're not trying to scare you away. We're not trying to get you into a consultation. Um, here's some information you might find helpful. Maybe it's a follow-up. Maybe it's the second um, part of thinking about estate planning. So we go from simple power of attorney to, hey, you know what would be really awesome is if you just also created this, a simple living will, um, and these, these are the reasons why you might want to do that. And then we might back off again and just say, you know, happy holidays, happy July 4th, happy Easter, um, hope that you had a good break away um, from school or work with the kids. And then we jump back into a frequently asked question, and then you end with, here's an event I'm attending. And so what this is, is this is a series of anywhere from one to 20 emails that you have um, all lined up to send to that person. And you can send them manually, you can keep them in Word documents, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you continue to talk to the people that are downloading that guide. You've done all of this work to get them into your social media profiles and then to have them actually meet you online um, and give you that email address. Don't waste it. Just for everybody's knowledge, the value of someone's email address is around $75. So um, from the time that it takes you to go to an event, park your car, meet them, buy a cheeseburger, get a coffee, whatever it is to get that email address, the, the average is around $75. So you've spent all that time and effort getting in touch with this person. Let's just see where it goes. Let's, let's send them a few emails, and that can be a newsletter, um, some just ideas for email campaigns. Um, what are your frequently asked questions? So jot down the five questions that you have, you know, and you, you hear in a consultation on a regular basis, and write a blog post about it or add it to a newsletter. And those are the types of emails that you can send. Um, and then offer some way for them to come and meet you in person after five or six emails or offer, hey, you know, I've got time next week, any day, you know, in the morning, do you want to chat? And you would be amazed at, at um, over time, how many people will actually respond to those. So I'm going to jump back into the other presentation. And I've got um, sample emails that I can send. So if anybody would like a copy of this other presentation, which is how to create an email newsletter or a campaign in one hour, I will be happy to send those to you. I'm going to switch back over um, to our original presentation and open up the floor to questions. Let's see. We don't have any questions in the chat box yet, but if anyone has them, go right ahead. Okay. Let's see. And I'll throw my contact information up, so if anybody does want a copy of this presentation or um, the how to create a email newsletter or the basics of an email campaign, I can get those out to everybody today. Perfect, thank you, Chelsea. Yeah. All right. Okay, so if no one else has any questions, and we've got Chelsea's contact info up there in case you think of your questions after, um, I'll just take a quick minute to plug our super marketing conference for this year. Um, Smokeball, of course, will be there. We have two days worth of the conference. It's June 2nd and 3rd. It'll be in Boston and online. I'm going to put our URL to register 
right in the chat box in case anyone wants to jump on that. And if not at the moment, you'll certainly have plenty of opportunities to do that in the future. You won't be shy. Thank so you, yes. For everyone. And um, we will be, Smokewell will be there. If you haven't had a check out a chance to check out Smokewell AI or Smokewell Activity Intelligence, um, we'll be showing it off um, at the Supermarketing Conference. It's a activity tracking tool for small firms that tells you what you've been working on. So uh, emails sent and received for particular clients or matters, documents created, um, letters drafted, phone calls, tasks, and all, all kinds of wonderful things in a beautiful, easy-to-read report. I'm really looking forward to seeing that, Chelsea. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. All right, well, still no questions, so we'll let you get on with your day. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you for having me.